This has probably been one of the most requested videos on the channel. Let's have a look at how sopogamine lithium carbonate prices are affecting Premier African Minerals, Codal Minerals and American battery technology. Lithium and sopogamine concentrate are words that you'd be very accustomed to if you follow this channel. We invest in several companies that predominantly deal with the extraction of lithium and making sopogamine. Outside of that, you'd be familiar with the words probably from the rise of electric vehicles, EVs, over the recent years as well. But what exactly do they mean and why are they so important for the future? Sopogamine concentrate is a lithium rich material derived from the mineral sopogamine a primary source of lithium. After mining, the ore is then processed to concentrate the lithium contacts, usually about 6% lithium oxide. The concentrate is then used to produce lithium compounds like lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide, essential for making batteries for electric vehicles and energy storage systems. Demand for sopogamine concentrate has surged with the growth of electric vehicle industry and clean energy initiatives. So why are these minerals important? Well, see these things here? They have lithium inside them. These are mobile phones. Anything at all nowadays that's being made with a battery will have this mineral. And that is why it's so important. These are the building blocks really for, for the future. Lithium is absolutely critical to the global transition towards renewable energy. Its use in lithium ion batteries enables electric vehicles to replace fossil fuel powered cars helping reduce global carbon emissions. Additionally, lithium ion batteries are essential for storing energy generated by renewable sources such as wind and solar. Those big battery packs that Elon Musk is talking about, the storage facilities of these things are huge and they are fundamental because when the wind's not blowing, you need to store energy. When the sun is down, where are you getting your solar energy from? That's why the batteries are so essential. Global demand for lithium is expected to increase exponentially. According to a report from the World Bank, demand for lithium could rise by 500% by 2050, largely due to the shift towards clean energy technologies. Open your eyes, there's not a lot of electric vehicles on the road. Most houses will still be running on fossil fuels. There is a huge transition to come. But not everything is smooth sailing. Despite the massive demand for lithium prices have seen a significant drop in 2023 slash 2024, prices of the battery grade lithium carbonate, for instance, fell over 80% from their peak in 2022. And now if we look at this graph, you can see this is taken from today, um, the 18th of September, 2024. The prices had bottomed out as low as 740, but we have seen a rise up to 751. Thankfully, it looks to have bottomed out and rebounded. But why did this massive sell off come when this demand is still there? Well, it boils down to two main factors overproduction and overcapacity. And if we look at some uh, recent articles, this has just come out this morning. You can see here China infantry down with robust lithium prices promoting smelter sales. And you can have a look at this graph here. You can see the current session is 14,350 tons. The previous session was 14,550 tons. So in the week, we're down 1.37, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it does make a difference. Lithium carbonate infantry, you can see here the percentages. We are going on a downwards turn. And you can even see from here, from the highs to the lows, we are falling. And we've seen this in other commodities. The prices of oil, for example, when they're overstocked, they tend to stop producing, which then brings down the supply, which then increases the prices. Major producers, particularly in China, ramped up lithium mining to meet projected demand, leading to an oversupply. Additionally, innovations in recycling lithium and new mining technologies have begun to alleviate some of the supply pressure. And that's where American battery technology comes in. It does also mine lithium, but it's the battery technology of recycling. That's vital for me. That to me is something that we will need. You can't just be dumping these batteries when they're done at the end of the road. If we can re make a rechargeable small battery that you can put in, uh, I was gonna say a Walkman, we're a wee bit beyond Walkman, but if you were to put a battery in the toys, for, for example, if we can find a way of recharging them, why can't we do it on a bigger scale? And that's why our American battery technology for me is filling a void and that will also help with demand. But the most notable event is the suspension of lithium production by Catal, C-A-T-L, one of China's largest battery producers. And this move would be the reason why the brakes have been halted at the 740 and we have seen a rise to 751. So you would think at 751 a ton, this would be highly profitable, but there is a lot of money that goes into running these plants. And it's not just as straightforward as getting a shovel in a ground, digging something up and selling it. Now let's get an idea of the running cost for these plants. Thanks, shout out to Rogue in the Discord here who put a lot of great information in. I have 
stole that information and just reworded it a bit for your viewing pleasure. But here's the scenario. An average fuel tanker delivering to a place like Tesco holds around 36,000 litres. Diesel in Zimbabwe costs about $1.63 per litre. So when the plant is fully operational, and this is the regards to Premier African Minerals, they are likely to receive at least two tanker deliveries a week, each costing nearly 60,000 USD, $120,000 per week, just to run the thing. Considering the mining machinery also runs on diesel, the total fuel cost can easily reach millions of dollars per month. A 50% load, the generators consume 12,000 litres of diesel daily, meaning one 36,000 litre tanker would last just three days, aligning with the estimate of deliveries per week. And George Roach, the CEO of Premier African Minerals, has outlined this several times. These numbers are based on public available information from Stockbox Site Tour. Watch their video, shout out to them. Through the sites, energy demands have likely increased due to the new equipment, like the large ball mill and additional float circuit stages. It's realistic to estimate three million dollars per month just for our diesel and wages a figure confirmed by george Roach at a recent event so when you factor in all the running costs and you factor in that the supposed prices are as low as 750 dollars this makes a lot of mining companies very very nervous it is on the point that these companies are producing stuff that doesn't even make them a profit the price of supposed has dropped to an average of 750 dollars per ton Kodal Minerals would still be turning a profit as their projected costs are in around $674, which isn't great, but at least there's plenty of breathing room there for now. However, many other supposedly miners like Prem with costs of 750 per tonne may not be as fortunate and that is where the situation is. Now, in the recent RNS just last week by George Roach, he had come out and said with upscaling of different things and a bit of jiggery and what they've already got he reckons production costs could be around five hundred dollars i just don't really fully believe that um I, I think it's more of a bit of a flirt i think he's trying to maybe pitch uh premier african minerals out to potential buyers i just don't really understand the rationale behind that but that's why it is there on their brackets five hundred dollars per ton would be phenomenal but i just don't buy it i would take that with a pinch of salt with the challenges put to the side, the overall outlook for lithium and sopodiamine concentrate is very positive. As we continue to advance in recycling technologies and develop more sustainable mining practices, the environmental impact of lithium will obviously be reduced. The World Economic Forum projects that the global EV sales could surpass 25 million units by the end of 2030, which would be outstanding. And guess what powers all of the vehicles? That's right guys, lithium ion batteries. So we are in a good space here. Additionally, as price stabilize and supply balances out, we should see the lithium market returning to healthier levels, ensuring sustainability for future decades. I personally think the mining industry right now is at a bottom and I'm hoping that that bottom is already past. It's a difficult period with rising interest rates. It's very, very difficult for small companies, especially that have no way of being able to take out loans as such in this very difficult economical environment to do other ways of run, raising funds other than asking for help, getting a joint venture, or unfortunately the worst case, diluting shareholders. It's safe to say that Codal Minerals, Premier African Minerals and American Battery Technology have seen a real fall from grace. They are struggling. Some are in better situations than others. Some have better support mechanisms. Some have done it a different way than others. They're all trying to achieve the same thing, but they've all taken different paths. And you can leave your comments down below which company you feel has made the better choices. I don't want to get into that debate today, but that is the video. Hopefully now you can kind of understand the difficulties that these companies are having. Hopefully Hopefully you can also understand the importance of lithium and sapodiumine going forward in the future. For me, it's just about these companies that we're invested in surviving and making it to the next leg up. I feel and I hope and I pray that the worst is over in terms of the commodity prices. I think the economical environment that we're going into here is going to be a lot more difficult. However, with interest rates coming down, that usually sees a rebound in the likes of these smaller penny stock growth companies. So there's a lot of moving parts and we'll only and only time will tell if these companies will be here come 2030. These should always be a long hold. Manage your risk. I'm not a financial advisor. If you find it informative, please like and subscribe. Help us grow the channel. And I'll see you all in the next video.